On April 19, 1995, a man parked a truck right here full of explosives, then got out, locked the door, and took off that way. Unfortunately, that truck did explode. We're at the site of the Oklahoma City bombing. Killed 168 people, including 19 innocent children. We're going to show you around the pretty incredible memorial they have set up here. Tell you some stories about the heroes of that day as well. We hope you'll join us. This is where the building was on the day of the explosion. These trees, the nine trees, represent the front of the building. If you go and look at the 903 wall, you count down five of these trees, that's pretty much the exact spot where the truck, the rider truck full of explosives, was sitting when it exploded. With regard to this proceeding, basically there are four elements that I have to uh, uh, receive information regarding. <laughs> chair behind us represents a person's life that was lost. Yeah, the little chairs, you see them spread throughout there, represent the children killed. The bigger ones, of course, are for the adults. And you'll notice that pretty much all the children's chairs are right in this area. That's because the daycare center was somewhere over in here, pretty close, unfortunately, to where the bomb went off. Also, you'll notice that a lot of the chairs are kind of right in this area. There's a bunch of them here. That's because obviously this is the blast zone. It's more spread out when you get out further. Each chair, by the way, represents the floor of the building they were on. The building was nine stories tall. There's nine rows. So someone died on every level of the building. The chairs are handmade of bronze, stone, and glass. Three unborn babies were killed in the blast, and their names are etched on their mother's chairs. This is the chair for Carrie Ann Lenz and baby Michael James Lenz III. Carrie had just found out she was having a boy the night before. Right behind us was once an entryway to the building. Over here on the ground are emblems of 17 federal agencies and three non-federal agencies that occupied the building on the day of the explosion. Diana Bradley was here visiting the Social Security Administration. She got caught in a cave-like structure under the rubble. Her leg was stuck. She couldn't move. She was yelling for help. A doctor by the name of Andrew Sullivan from Oklahoma City, he's actually a surgeon. He showed up, he was able to maneuver his way in there. He found Diana and he had to unfortunately cut her leg off at the knee. He went through four surgical saws. He was having to use his left hand. He's actually right-handed, but he's having to use his left hand because he didn't have room to maneuver in there properly to get his right hand in there with the saw. Eventually he had to finish up with his own pocket knife, but they were able to get her out. She went into shock. They had to revive her at the hospital. Unfortunately, when she woke up, she found out that her two young sons had died, as well as her mother. They were all here to get a social security card for one of her young sons. What a tragic day. Over here, we have an actual wall that still remains from the building. And they have a presentation here called the Survivor's Wall. It's where they list the names of all the survivors from this building and from buildings around it from the day of the explosion. If not for the bomb going off that morning, more than likely the nine kids who died would have been out here playing and having fun that very afternoon. This grass lawn was a playground for the children at the daycare. In this picture taken shortly after the explosion, you can see the playground off to the left behind the building. Behind us is where the blast had taken place, and over here is an elm tree. This is the only surviving tree from the day of the blast. Actually, this area was a parking lot, and there were cars on fire all throughout the parking lot when the blast happened. You can even see the black soot on the tree to this day. There are photos of Oklahoma City from the 1920s showing this tree. So it is at least 100 years old today. Right now, we are standing in the rescuer's orchard. This is an area where they've planted trees around the survivor's tree. It represents the rescuers who came in and helped the survivors. That's why it surrounds the survivor tree. 
901 found on the eastern gate represents the last moments of peace. The middle area here is the reflecting pool. The water is moving, but we were able to see our image in it. When you see your image, it represents someone changed forever by what happened here. And then over here on the other gate, it says 903. That represents the first moments of recovery. This building was the Journal Record building at the time. The roof was blown off in the explosion. There is now a new roof in place, but you can see much of the damage is still visible. The Oklahoma City National Memorial Museum is now located here. 346 other buildings were damaged in the blast. On the side of the building, Team 5, which was made up of first responders and representatives from federal agencies, wrote on the day of the explosion, We search for the truth. We seek justice. The courts require it. The victims cry for it. And God demands it. A little bit further down, you will see that it says, Do not enter alley. It was also written on the day of the explosion. But rather than running away from the destruction, we ran toward the bomb buildings to help. This is a picture of the Ryder truck full of explosives as it went by the Regency Tower apartments at around 8.57 a.m. the morning of the blast. This is the security camera that took the video of the truck driving by. Here is someone's planner and a pencil sharpener from the Journal Record Building. This clock from the Journal Record Building is still reading out 902, the moment of the blast. The white shoe on the top display case here belonged to four-year-old Ashley Eccles, who was killed in the explosion. Parts of the building have been left as they were immediately after the blast. This is Timothy McVeigh's driver's license. This is a car McVeigh attempted to escape in. This is the shirt McVeigh was wearing the day of the blast. It says six semper tyrannis, which means thus always to tyrants. John Wilkes Booth yelled this out when he assassinated Abraham Lincoln. The back of the shirt quotes President Thomas Jefferson saying, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Heather signed our names in the guest book. After the bombing, a chain link fence was put up to protect the site. Visitors would leave messages and various items such as crosses and stuffed animals in memory of the victims. Family members, survivors, and rescuers moved parts of the fence to this spot when the memorial site opened. I don't know which one, but she actually came in about 30 minutes early so she could show her co-workers the, you know, after they take the photograph of the baby. Ultrasound. Ultrasound. So she was here at 902 because she was going to come in early and show. You know. It did, that's what this, the Jesus wept the statue across the street here on 5th. Mm -hmm. was a dedicated memorial for those three on the line. Oh, oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's, that's what they did there too. And, you know, to each their own. I'd look at it as 171 people. Yeah, so they don't count the babies as the part of the deaths? There are holes in the black granite wall at the And Jesus Wept statue for candles to be placed in memory of the victims. The black granite pillars represent the 19 children and three unborn babies who were killed. That definitely wasn't the easiest museum to walk through. There was a lot of sadness and devastation. However, it's really good to remember all the wonderful things that people did around the community and all the heroes who came through to help all the people that were affected or killed. 
Yeah, Oklahoma City really came together and now they've turned this into a very beautiful memorial. It's also a place that people hang out. They might have lunch here, lay out in the sun, read a book, study, whatever. So something very tragic has turned into something beautiful here in Oklahoma City. A. McCarthy, the second. Mary Leisure Renty. Teresa Lee Taylor Lauderdale. Ann Krimber. Thompson Eugene Jean Hodges Jr. J. Colleen Giles. Linda Louise Florence. Judy J. Rowe Fisher. Castine Brooks Kern Devereaux. Diana Lynn Day. Sergeant Benjamin Lorenzo Davis, United States Marine Corps. Paul E. Ice, Senior Special Agent. Claude Arthur Medeiros, Senior Special Agent. Rita Bender Long. Carol Sue Hillel. Doris Adele Higginbottom. Richard E. Cummins, Dr. Margaret L. Betty Clark, James E. Bowles, Bowen Earl Blue, Wanda Lee Watkins, Kayla Marie Dinsworth, Dolores D. Stratton, Victoria Vicky So, John C. Moss III, Peggy Louise Holland, Karen Gist Carr, Sergeant First Class Lola.